And welcome everybody to this week's edition of the live stream. It seems like forever since we've done one of these. And the reason is, is because we pre-taped a couple of shows and then I had to be out last week because I had tested positive for COVID. Uh, I'm fine. I was fine the whole time. Never had a symptom. It was quite uh, a non-event, but I still had to isolate for several days and do last week's Huckabee show from my studio at home as opposed to coming to Nashville because no one wanted to be around me. Of course, I got here this week and I thought they still don't want to be around me and it has nothing to do with COVID. At least Pam Case is willing to be around me. She is our senior producer for the Huckabee Show. I feel like she I is, need to reintroduce yeah, myself. <laughs> I know it has been forever. <laughs> nice to see you, sir. <laughs> Thanks. Same here. Uh, boy, what a long time it's Welcome been since back. we've done this. I know, one of these. I know. We'll have fun today. Well, we will. We'll have some great stuff to cover. We're not going to do a lot of covering with clips, at least, for the State of the Union. Uh, maybe that we could ask the question how many of you stayed awake for all of it? But uh, here's what I'd like to ask you who are viewing today. Send in to us your comment on the State of the Union address if you saw it. Mm -hmm. And if you did, I'm sure you have an opinion. I know I certainly did. I found myself watching Nancy Pelosi look like she needed some dental floss because she was always mm -mm -mm like this the whole time with her teeth. And I thought, get the lady some floss. Something's going on here. <laughs> Our polydent something. It was just bizarre and it was very distracting. I don't know if anyone else found that. But anyway, if you have a comment about the State of the Union address, <laughs> please send it in to us. Also, send questions in the chat. Uh, chat. Uh, send a super chat. It gives you more visibility. We'll be uh, able to get to it quicker. Moderators are watching the chat for all of your questions. But of course, the big thing we want you to do, subscribe to the channel. That's important. Hit the notification bell that's right there on the screen and leave your comment. Also, like the page and share it with others. And right now is the ideal time to share the page because as we're just getting started, sharing it might prompt somebody to join us and to be here for the entire time we're going to be here on the live stream. All right, uh, we want to jump into it. Awkward moments from Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, most of her moments seem to be rather awkward. I, I've never seen someone who has been in public life for as long as she has, who seems to have such a difficult time sounding serious, it's sounding credible. And, and if you're wondering what I'm talking about, watch this. It gives you an example of trying to explain the Ukrainian situation. Watch. Break it down in layman's terms for people who don't understand what's going on and how can this directly affect the people of the United States. So Ukraine is a country in Europe. It exists next to another country called Russia. We campaign with the plan. Uppercase T, uppercase P, the plan. Do you plan to visit the border? Uh, um, not today, <laughs> but um, I have before and I'm sure I will again. Oh my gosh. Ukraine is a country in Europe. Is this a geography lesson for the second graders that might be watching her? What in the world? And then the uh, moment when she was in Paris and she puts on this fake French accent like suddenly that makes her speak French. De plan, de plan. I'm thinking, no, that's really not speaking French. <laughs> it's just, and then the thing about the border. Do you ever feel just, em, I almost feel embarrassed. It makes me cry. I want to help just her. Just a little. Yeah, yeah, I want to help her. I want to say, yeah. here's how to say that where you don't sound like you've lost your mind. All right, here's another one. NBC asking Kamala Harris if Biden will sanction Russia's oil and gas industry. Now, I'm going to play this because I've watched it four or five times. I have a hard time understanding what the heck is she saying? Watch it, and if you know what she's saying, if you can translate it, send us a comment. Let's watch as it relates to what we need to do domestically as well as, as what we need to do in terms of this issue generally. We have, as the president said, uh, reevaluated what we're doing in terms of the strategic oil reserve here in the United States to make sure that it will not have an impact or we can mitigate the impact on the American consumer. Okay, perfectly clear, right? I mean, if, if 
the phrase word salad could be applied to a video clip. That's it right there, word salad. And it's like somebody who is talking and while they're talking, they're trying to think of something to say, but keep talking, saying nothing, hoping that it sounds like something. something yeah. yeah. Now, again, I, I hope I'm not being overly cruel, but by golly, I couldn't make sense out of that. Um, one of the things we're all having a hard time understanding, we clearly realize that gas prices, mm. not just gasoline prices, but all of our energy is through the roof. If you've bought propane lately, you feel like that you've got to sell a kidney to fill up your propane tank if you have it. Um, I feel especially for people who are barely making it. There are a lot of single moms out there. Uh, when, when they pay a dollar more a gallon, this totally affects their ability to get to work, drop their kids off at daycare, pick them up uh, and get home. Mm. I, I mean, that's grocery money, folks. And then when they go to the grocery store, what's happened? Grocery costs are up almost 20%. And by the way, because of the war going on between Russia and Ukraine, they're going to get a lot worse because Ukraine is a major agriculture supplier, particularly of wheat and soybeans, sunflower, from which uh, vegetable oil is made. So all of the things that go into our food supply dramatically going up because of what's happening in Ukraine right now. And I, I hope people understand. But when it gets down to the energy issue, we were energy independent before Joe Biden took office. Under Donald Trump, for the first time in 75 years, we were energy independent and we were starting to export energy, which means we not only had more than enough for every American, we were now dealing with an abundant supply and we were selling to the Europeans, we could sell to the Middle East, uh, we now had a ample supply, which meant more energy jobs, lower prices for every American. I, I don't have to tell you to, gee, how long ago was it that you were paying a lot less for gasoline? You go back and you say, yeah, it was just before January of 2021. What happened in January of 2021? Mm. Joe Biden was sworn in as president. I'm not meaning to be cruel, but here's why this has happened. Joe Biden has sold out to the radical left on the Green New Deal. These are people who do not believe that we in America ought to use fossil fuel. So it doesn't mean that there's less fossil fuel being used across the world. It just means it isn't ours. So Russia has stepped up their production. And you know what's really crazy? Right now, as we sit here live, Russia is selling energy, selling gas and oil, to the United States. We are helping pay for the war that's going on in Ukraine right now. All the time talking about how horrible it is, but we're fueling Putin's energy market. That's crazy. We've got it here. We could turn our own spigots, go into our shell reserves. Joe Biden mentioned the other night he's gonna release, I, I think it was uh, 50, million gallons, and, and you know, that sounds like a lot. Here's the, the sad fact. What he is gonna release will supply America's energy needs for less than three days, more like two days. That's it. It will not affect the price. And I saw it jump up, Pam, by like 15, 20 cents in one day, in one day. So I, I wanna play this. This is Transportation Secretary Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Now, Here's why we're in trouble, because this is one of the people helping to make the energy policy. Watch. Could the president possibly consider authorizing the Keystone Pipeline, uh, working something out with Iran? I mean, uh, look, the, the president has said that all options are on the table, but we also need to make sure that uh, uh, we're not galloping after permanent solutions to immediate short-term problems where uh, more strategic and tactical actions in the short term can make a difference. Folks, that's government speak for we don't care that you're spending most of your paycheck for gas and fuel uh, because we're more interested in making sure that we appease these green uh, New Deal crazies, and that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna sell out the whole American public 
to these lunatics who have no answers for how we're going to get to green energy in a reasonable amount of time at an affordable price. I'm all for green energy. It's fine. But we got 500 years worth of energy under our feet just in the United States. If we used everything that not only we are currently using, but everything we project to use over the course of the next 500 years, we could supply it. Surely by then we'll come up with new solutions. But until we do that are affordable and practical, why don't we use what we have? This is like having a large shelf filled with rice and beans and saying, gosh, we can't eat right now because uh, the only thing we really want to eat is pasta and we can't afford pasta, so we're just going to starve. We're just going to starve to death. Why don't you eat the rice and beans? Oh, no, 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 because rice and beans are not fashionable and somebody thinks that only racists eat that, so we're not... That's how stupid this stuff is. Uh, Jen Psaki at the White House was asked what Americans should be doing practically uh, to deal with the cost of fuel. Watch her response. What should they be doing practically at this moment, considering the price of gas is going to affect them? Of course it is, as I've been saying, and that's why we've been focused on it for weeks, if not months. They're not focused on it. They're focused not on making it less expensive for you. That could be fixed really easily. They're focused on trying to make sure that AOC and Rashida Tlaib and uh, the folks, Bernie Sanders, are all happy about what they're doing. Just remember that. When you go to vote in November, you keep voting for these people. That's what they're doing to you. Now, this is Jen Psaki talking about how Biden is doing everything he can. If you believe that, well, let's see. Here's how she puts it. The president is going to do everything we can to reduce the impact, uh, to make sure that we are working with our partners around the world to address the volatility in the global oil markets, to consider a range of options that he can continue to take to uh, reduce the impact that they're feeling at the pump. Basically, that is a non-answer. That's one of those great government speak kind of answers that says we're doing everything we can and we're, we're recognizing this incredible problem. We don't have any solutions that we're going to use because they're politically incorrect, but boy, oh boy, do we care. You know, I think the only gas that we'll get relief of from these guys is buying Rolaids because that's the only gas I think we're going to have any relief from the gas that they're giving us from all this nonsense. We'd love to know, what are you paying for gasoline where you are? If you want to comment to us and give us some answers, we'll uh, give a sampling of those in the course of our chat. Let's go to some questions. I know we've had time to get some in. Oh, absolutely. So, Pam, let's uh, see. What are people thinking out there? Well, absolutely. Sh uh, uh, Sue Prov had written, as you were speaking, should we stop buying Russian gas and oil? And what is the logic of not opening the pipeline from Canada and drilling on public lands? I just don't understand it. Well, no sane person would, could understand this because we shouldn't be buying Russian oil. Nobody should. And here's what's interesting. A lot of the European countries, Germany, that had a lot of its energy, they've shut it off. They've said, we're not buying from this evil man. And Putin is an evil guy. And so they said, we're not buying from Well, we are. And this is crazy. Makes no sense at all. We need to starve his supply uh, or his market and make him drink his own oil for a while. Um, the U.S. In, is even talking about getting energy and oil from Iran, for heaven's sakes. Hmm. You can't make this up. We got our own. This is crazy. We're going to buy from the most evil people on the planet and enrich them, and we're going to make people poor who live in energy states like Texas and Louisiana and Arkansas and New Mexico and California and places all over our own uh, United States. There are jobs to be had, good paying jobs, and it means you could fuel your car for half of what it's costing you right now. Yeah, absolutely. If you like what you're seeing, by the way, make sure um, you uh, like us and uh, hit the bell for future notifications and also share with your friends. Still plenty of time for you to be involved with us today as we ask uh, questions and do our best to answer for you. Warhoss has asked, Governor, can the Convention of States keep our leaders from trashing our country? Well, the Convention of States could do several things. I mean, it, it depends on what is proposed, but it would mean that 
rather than waiting on Congress to do something, which they're never going to do, a convention of states could put forth a balanced budget amendment that would hold Congress as accountable as you are in your household uh, to only spending what you have and not borrowing what you can't pay back. The second thing a convention of states could do is put term limits on members of Congress. Could put it even on members of the judiciary. Uh, but that'll never happen with congressional action. They'll never do it. Uh, it could end congressional pensions so that members of Congress would pay into Social Security. They could pay into a 401k like you might have the privilege of doing. But there wouldn't be any special pension plans, special health care plans that are better than the ones that you can get. Those will never happen by an act of Congress. They'll only happen if the states take the initiative, have a convention of the states, put it before the state legislators, and amend the U.S. Constitution to do it. Ryan Spade wrote today, Governor, all the Biden administration has to do is reverse everything that they did this week. How's that? <laughs> it's actually a good um, observation, Ryan. And it's not just what they've done this week, but it's really going back to January of 2021. On Biden's first day in office, he killed the, X -Stone, uh, the Keystone XL pipeline. He basically opened the border up and created an absolute disaster there. Um, he opened the floodgates of, of widespread abortion. There's so many things that, that he did. Look, some of them I understand. Elections have consequences. He won. He gets to make some of the decisions, and he has a Democrat Congress. But he should have kept things that were working. Doesn't matter who initiated them. If it works, don't mess with it. As the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this is a guy that went into some things that weren't broke. He took his tools out and he broke them. Now we need someone to go fix them. Um, let's do another one before we go to another clip. And we hope you'll continue to send your comments. We'd love to know what you think of the State of the Union. And also, what are you paying for fuel where you live? Tell us what you're paying and where you live. All right, here's one in answer to your question about watching the State of the Union. Uh, this particular audience member said they just felt sick, just sick uh, after Worse watching Worse than COVID, it. huh? Worse than yeah. COVID. So uh, Dennis Smith writes, today I watched the State of the Union, and as usual, all I saw was more world and no God. Mm -hmm. There is not enough intelligence in the whole room to fill a thimble. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't have wisdom without asking for it from God. Where is God in all Ooh. this? Good observation, Dennis. You know, the Bible says in the first uh, chapter of the book of James, um, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. It's the one time I want to be a liberal, asking God liberally for wisdom. And I, I think we do not have enough people who are asking him for that. Wonderful observation, Dennis. Thank you. Um, let's read another one before we go to another clip. All right. Uh, one more. Uh... Kenneth M. is writing, the states will never do that if those people think they have a shot at a seat in Congress. Who would want to take away their own privilege? Well, I'll tell you who would do it. People who put the idea of public service ahead of self-service. Mm. And that's why we need to have term limits. So when a person goes in, they know they're not going to be there forever. They know that uh, they're going to have to go home and live under the laws they've written for the rest of us. And they'd be a little more careful about it since they got to go home. I want to play this clip. This is uh, Jen Psaki. This is our this week's Psaki bomb. All right, this is uh, Jen Psaki at the White House talking about border security. This is an irony of all ironies. Let's watch. No, I would say first the bill that the president proposed on his first day in office included smarter security uh, and border protections and also included a more humane uh, path uh, for uh, migrants entering the country. Uh, both of those remain priorities for the president. He believes that the, the immigration system is broken. It's long overdue to fix it. Uh, he also believes and worked on this very closely as vice president that addressing the root causes is one of the central steps we need to remain focused on even as we're trying to address the current circumstances at the border. Jen, let me give you a little help here. One of the central causes, you say, about illegal immigration just running out of control is because you opened the door and you left cheese and everybody's coming to run for it. It's real simple. This is not complicated. 
may be in Washington, but where the rest of us live in America, we kind of understand. Uh, the border policies that we had, which were control of the border, letting people in when they uh, le legitimately wanted to come and be part of this country and they desired to fill out the paperwork and tell us who they were and where they come from, uh, took a test to make sure they weren't bringing any communicable disease in. The immigration system was getting better. And the, the so-called wall, well, it was beginning to work because we funneled people toward controllable entries. None of us are against immigration that I know. There may be somebody. I've never met anyone who was against immigration. I know most people are against illegal immigration because it lowers the wages for American workers. It invites criminals in with no accountability as to who's going to control what they do when they get here. And one of the worst things that Joe Biden doesn't seem to ever want to talk about, it causes the exploitation of children who end up getting trafficked into sex activities. This is horrible. And when he talks about, and Jen Psaki talks about more humane treatment, what is so humane about an eight-year-old, nine-year-old girl being sold as a sex slave in this country to be abused and likely killed by people who treat her like she's just a piece of property. There's nothing humane about that. And what's humane about bringing large amounts of fentanyl into the country that every day is killing far more people than COVID has? And it's killing people at all walks of life, not just poor people, but upper middle class, wealthy people, as well as working class and poor people. It's killing Americans. How'd that happen? We didn't control the border. Stuff's coming across by the kilos. And it's just crazy, absolutely crazy. We got some okay. more questions? Yes, Governor, we actually, uh, we've run a poll asking about gas prices uh -huh. in the area where they are from. How much has your gas gone up? And uh, uh, over 200 votes now, 50 cents and more. 50 so cents far, and in, more. For over 200 votes um, for 50 cents plus. Wow. Yep, in the last little bit. So that is a lot. Um, also, uh, and let me see, Alexandris Werewolf says, you Americans pay for your own destruction. You should stop that. Mm. That's what you said earlier, I think. Amen. <laughs> um, Tim Schaefer says, do you think America will, um, do you think America will wind up in the Ukrainian conflict? In a way, we already are. Mm -hmm. um, do I think we will put troops on the ground? I don't think so. And the reason I don't is because we don't have a contractual or a legal contract like we do with NATO. We may end up, if Putin ends up overtaking Ukraine, which he's on the verge of doing, it's possible that he will keep mo moving and go into Poland or one of the NATO nations. If he does that, then we are now obligated to defend those nations and we would be engaged in the war. We wouldn't have much of a moral choice because we've made that commitment and we can hardly then uh, get out of it. But will we put troops directly in Ukraine? I don't think we will, uh, but I do hope that we will supply the nation of Ukraine with as much weaponry and technology as is humanly possible for us to get to them. Stinger missiles, um, helicopters, ammo by the cargo plane load, whatever they need. I thought it was very telling when President Zelensky of Ukraine was offered by the United States an opportunity to fly out and evacuate. And his answer was one of the greatest answers of the 21st century. He said, I don't need a ride, I need ammo. I, I tell you, this guy has been impressive. I have thoroughly been inspired by President Zelensky and the Ukrainian people who against all odds are fighting back and making it tough for Putin just to walk in and take them over. But let's be clear, a lot of Ukrainians are being killed, uh, tortured. We have reports today that many of the women are being raped by the Russian soldiers. This is horrendous. It's a war crime. And I hope Vladimir Putin hangs at the end of a rope for it. Uh, he's an evil man. Uh, he should be tried under international law uh, and ultimately if if there ever was a time uh, for the things he's unleashed upon this country of Ukraine he should be executed 
Along the same lines, Governor Sandra B. Garcia did ask if you, the U.S. knew of Putin's intentions before he did anything, why couldn't something be done ahead of time to stop him? That's a great question, Sandra, and we seem to have known that he was threatening, that he was building up troops, that we knew. I mean, we have satellite imagery uh, in our spy satellites as well as our uh, surveillance planes. They fly 24 hours a day around the globe. Uh, we knew what he was doing in terms of massing these, uh, these troops. And I think that there were so many people in Washington in the Biden administration that said, well, he's doing all that. He won't really pull the trigger and go into Ukraine. So if, if they're that clueless about what Putin might do, folks, it may be that if the president really was on top of it, he'd fire every single person in his national security operation and get some competent people who could better predict something that is this catastrophic, which should have been a little more obvious. Okay, another one from Deborah Gaddis. I'm looking, I'm hoping our culture survives the next three years. If it does, we will be at a point of no return on major issues. Well, that's, uh, that's a good point. And Deborah, on the cultural issues, there's so many ways in which we're undermining the foundations of our country. You, you can't keep a country that you teach people to hate. So if the next generation going to government schools are taught that America is a horrible place and uh, that it's an evil country and that it's inherently and systemically uh, racist, then yeah, you're gonna destroy the country because nobody will want to defend it, nobody will want to live in it, nobody will want to try to uh, protect it, preserve it, and pass it on. You're 100% correct. So Joe, sells, Joe is asking today, Biden said in the State of the Union that last year more jobs were added than in a single, uh, in a single year than any time in history. Is that a true statement? Not really, because what he's alluding to is that there were a lot of jobs that were lost because of COVID that started coming back. And also people who had been on COVID paychecks started coming back when their COVID checks ended. But here's the fact, drive on any street in America, look and see if you run a small business, I'm not telling you something you don't know. You've got a help wanted sign out and you can't get people to come and even interview. I was talking with a small business owner just yesterday. She desperately needs uh, workers in her business. She had four people who signed up for interviews to come uh, and potentially go to work. Not one of them showed up. And a couple that did demanded, she's paying them $15 an hour, mm. which is well beyond what they uh, normally would be paid for the job that she has them doing. And a guy came in and said, no, I won't do it for less than 20. And she said, well, there's the door because I can't pay that and still charge a reasonable cost to my customers. That's what people are up against. So when he says he created jobs, were there jobs created? Yes, unemployment numbers are low, but in part because a lot of people have just quit the workforce and because some people are coming back and some people are registering, they're working two or three jobs. So it looks like three jobs were created, but only one person is filling them. That's another factor that we're not getting fully in there. Okay, we only have about a minute left, so uh, have a, another quick one. We have a read? quick one. Uh, uh, I think we're being lied to about this conflict by the MSM. Yes, no? Yeah, MSM being mainstream media, of course we're being lied to. They lied to us pretty much about everything. But I'd like to think that some of them are waking up to the fact that we have a real humanitarian crisis going on in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's nobody's fault but Vladimir Putin's. He's the one who initiated this. And so the world, joyfully, I will say, is at least standing up against Putin. They are standing with the people of Ukraine. And I think they are inspired by the people of Ukraine and their willingness to fight back. Be sure and leave other questions you may have in the comments section. We'll try to uh, uh, look at those after the time with our live stream. As always, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And uh, we hope you'll join us every time that we're together, including this weekend for our show, The Huckabee Show, on TBN. And uh, if you wonder why you ought to watch it, I've got a really, really good reason, and I'm going to let you see it right now. This week on Huckabee, intelligence expert Rebecca Koffler.
Hilarious news stories on In Case You Missed It. Now the Queen has Meghan and Harry's next Christmas gift. Comedian Robert G. Lee. And award-winning fiddler Janae Fleener. Watch Huckabee on Saturday at 8, 7 central and again on Sunday at 9, 8 central right here on TBN.